to go with her to confront her husband. She told us later that he was on the computer when they got there. When his, when his eyes met her eyes, he knew she knew. He fell off the chair onto the floor in a fetal position and cried, My life is over. He never denied the charges and much to his credit said that Alicia did the right thing by exposing what he had done. He was, in a strange way, proud of her for telling and ending the deception. Leaving her friends with her husband, my daughter came to the motel we had checked into near the house. Sometimes words just cannot express the heart. All I could do was hold her in my arms and weep with her. As the sobbing subsided, my message to my daughter and each of the children was and has been since that moment. This will be hard for you to understand now. But more good than bad will come out of this situation if you let it. She and her husband agreed to turn himself into the sheriff's department the next morning. Guns were hidden so he would not take his own life. On his way to the sheriff, he pulled over to the side of the road and waited for a speeding trailer truck to come along so he could throw himself in front of it. He could not. At the station, he confessed, it was videotaped to later be used in the trial. After he was placed in a cell, he considered hanging himself, but a guard said just the right thing talked him out of it. The next day we spent time with the kids as I held Alicia in my arms and wept uncontrollably. I repeated what I had told Kelly. I know this is hard for you to understand, but more good than bad will come out of this situation if you let it. My daughter could not handle the situation, moved back to Burbank with her two natural daughters, and Karen and I became parents of teenagers. When I was a teenager, the problems were chewing gum in class and running in the hall. I did not know how to handle the challenges before us. I will forego the hundreds of dramatic events that followed and are still producing sagas of their own. The lesson that we are learning out of this tragedy has helped us become better people. My wife, Karen, I want you to stand. My wife's with us today. My wife has gone and is going through beyond the call of duty as a wife and a mother and a grandmother, and I'm so proud of her. After months in jail awaiting trial, Steve's parents and brother took pity on him and posted a $50,000 bond. The trial was legally delayed time and time again. As the postponements were about to run out, he cut off his finger and used it as an excuse for not appearing in court. Again, the trial was reset. Just before the next trial date, news came that he had committed suicide by throwing himself in the Houston ship channel to feed himself to the sharks. Steve had taken his severed finger with his wedding ring on it and placed it on the divorce papers in a motel room along with a suicide note. Circled in an open Bible was the verse, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than he should offend one of these little ones. Detectives matched the blood found on the kayak floating in the bay with the blood in the motel room. His friends, his, his family declared him dead. And Karen and I attended a memorial service in Pasadena. It was said there was frostbite on the finger because he had kept it frozen. This led me to believe the drama was to cover up a flight from justice. Was he still alive? The FBI thought so and was looking for him. About two years passed. Katrina had done lots of damage in New Orleans and our grandson Jimmy was working with his boss doing reconstruction work over there. Jimmy's boss spotted Steve at Home Depot. 
He'd been lying low in New Orleans and after Katrina helped rescue workers, becoming a hero. He reportedly saved the lives of 26 people from the storm. He'd been interviewed on television but refused to let them use his name. He knew, we knew, this would, traumatic, would be too traumatic for the kids to learn that their father was indeed not, a, not dead, but very much alive. We'd taken them to, the move, to a movie that evening and all this, when all this hit the evening news. On the way home from a friend, I learned by cell phone that indeed it was all over the news. Returning home with the kids, we had a family meeting in our living room where we told them their dad was alive. Emotional weeping filled our home. The New Orleans sheriff within the next few days extradited Steve to Bastrop. We're waiting for trial to begin all over again. There would be no bond this time. Steve sent us a letter from jail telling us that he would forever be in our debt for taking care of his children. Days before the trial, I sent him a certified letter reminding him of his words and told him the debt would be paid in full if he threw himself on the mercy of God and the mercy of the court and did not make his adopted daughter testify. The plea bargain was for 30 years. I begged him to accept the plea where he could probably get off in 15. Whatever you do, do not force her to testify. He did not take my advice. She did testify. The jury found him guilty and sentenced him to 99 years in state prison twice. The first possibility of parole is in 30 years when he will be 82. The saga is not over. There is still much damage to be repaired for Alicia, her sisters, and their brothers who adored their father. The boys especially felt he was a great father to them and believed he could do no wrong. Steve's betrayal and deception was huge, complete, causing the brothers confusion and hampering the ability to trust anyone. All of these young people are works in progress, all at different levels. More glory is yet to come. We're praying for Steve, my daughter, is praying for him. We believe that he can help others in prison. I feel that I will someday visit him and somehow encourage him. Last year, Alicia began dating a boy the family had known since he was 13. She said, I have never dated a boy before who put God first. They have fallen in love. He recently asked my permission to marry her. How many young people will do that today? He's a fine young man and we're glad to have him as part of our family. One month from tomorrow, I'm proud to be the daddy. That's what she calls me to walk Alicia down the aisle. One post note on this saga. Take precaution with yourself and your family. Be aware. Be very aware of any addiction that can destroy a life. Be it prescription drugs, any drugs, including alcohol, or other addictions like the addiction that started this saga that you just heard. That addiction, that curse that started all of this was pornography. Thank you for inviting me. Glad to answer the chat with you. Uh, Rotary Home 
by Mary Brighton. Can you get her the mic real quick? They say, we do have your gift, but I don't have it with me right now. <laughs> yeah, that's just like the $5,000. <laughs> it's in the mail, man. <laughs> My rotary moment, um, didn't even include me. <laughs> uh, Janice was having a social, and uh, we needed uh, out by the, the Houston House pool, and we needed a they needed a little pack up place, and they were all welcome in our apartment. And I was so glad that I could we could open up our home, and that all of our Rotarian friends could feel welcome in our home without either Jim or I there. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here. Thank you.